Welcome to this special Christmas edition of In the Labs with Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to make a nice mantle ornament for the holiday season where you can hide your own secret message, just like I did. These are great. I think it's highly customizable and really easy to make. I saw something similar to this when I was away at one of the shows we were doing and thought that we could easily recreate this with some very simple tooling. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the software and I'll show you how I made this and how you can customize it to make it your own. When you go ahead and download and install this project, you're gonna receive two different files. You're gonna have the actual um, vcar file here, which is the mystery mantle message.crv file. And also you're gonna have this merry christmas.svg file. Now you'll see that the CRV files are associated with our Vectric software, which is perfect. So when I double click on that, it'll open right up into my uh, vcar software. But in the case of the SVG file, you'll see that it's associated with Chrome. Now I know that I can import in directly into my software if I want to SVG files, but since version 11.5, we can now go ahead and right click on an SVG file and go down to open with, and we can go ahead and open it directly into our software. Now, if I want to go ahead and associate the SVG a file type to my vCarve desktop software. I can go ahead and do that, but that would mean that every time I double click on an SVG file, it would open up directly into my software. And I don't particularly want that to happen every time, but in this particular case, I do want it to happen this time. So I'll go ahead and choose that from the list. Now you'll see what's gonna happen now is my software is gonna open up. Now, like I said, VCAR desktops opened up. We have a job that's been set up. It's a single sided job. And the dimensions come from the actual SVG file that we've imported in. So in this case, it's just under six inches by a little bit smaller than three and a half inches tall. The thickness is just an arbitrary amount that we've decided by default SVGs would import in as. I mean, some of these other settings are just defaults as well. You can go ahead and change this if you'd like to. But for right now, I'm very happy with that. So we're just gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, since 11.5, we've gone ahead and updated our um, SVG import filter so that now an S SVGs that come in with bitmaps are kept intact. You'll see that this SVG file was made up of some vectors, which make up the font for this. We also have some bitmaps here as well. Now, I can go ahead and delete all the bitmaps that I'm not going to need, I don't think, for this file or for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out the background. I don't need that. I don't need the green and red bits of the holly. But what I do want to do is I want to keep this black and white or this grayscale version of this. Because if I click that, I can go over to my drawing tab and go down to my trace bitmap. So I can select that. I can go ahead and click preview on that right away. And we're going to treat that as a black and white bitmap. You see that I got a nice outline here. I'm very happy with that. So I can click apply and then close. And then I can delete out these bitmaps. Like that. Now, I want to make sure I line this up properly with the bitmap that's over there. So, if I hold down my control, my shift key, and H on my keyboard, it will copy that across to the other side of my job. And I can just go ahead and nudge that into place so it roughly represents what it looks like in the original SVG that I downloaded. Now, this is perfect. I love the font. I like the holly here. I can go ahead and use this as the basis of my mystery message that I want to put in my new lit mantle box. So let's go ahead now and open up the finished file that you're going to get with this particular project. When you first open up your file, you'll be presented with these notes. Now make sure that you read and understand these because it's going to be very important that if you uh, plan to cut this or make your own version of this, that you go ahead and adjust the feeds and speeds to match your material, your CNC and the tools that you have on hand. Safety first as always. So let's just click OK. Now this is the finished file that I came up with, up with in the end, the one that I actually cut for the project that you're going to see at the end of this video. Uh, on our first sheet, we've got the imported in SVG file. Now I left it intact the way it is, just so that you can go ahead if you want to go ahead and try what I did a minute ago by tracing those bitmaps and deleting out all the bits you don't need. Now I had done that, I had moved it all down to my layout sheet. Now if you watched any of the videos I've taken part in before, Typically, I have a layout sheet, or it's my design sheet, the space I'm actually going to outline what I want to do, and then I'll take that and break it off into other sheets so that I can go ahead and create all the tooling that I need. Let's go ahead and double click on the layout sheet. 
Now, right away, you'll see that we've got some extra vectors at the bottom here. So I've given you some alternate text if you'd like to use instead of the one that I have here. Yeah, it's up to you, whichever you'd like to use. One of the benefits of this is that the letters are a pretty consistent shape all the way through. And that really helps. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. So this might be a good option for you if, uh, for instance, you're a little bit worried about having thick uh, pieces of acrylic left behind that won't let the light through as much. So this is my actual layout that uh, we went ahead and I used to cut with. Now, what I've done or what I did was I laid it all out, then I moved everything onto the appropriate layers that I needed. So if we go ahead and right click on layer one and hide, or just show this one, give this one layer, you'll see that this is the actual layout of the text all done up nicely, all laid out and inside of the actual um, frame here. Now this frame here, this vector here, is the outside dimension of the acrylic that I'm gonna cut or I'm gonna cut it into. So if we go ahead and turn on our frame layer, you'll see something a little bit odd that it's slightly offset from the inside of this frame. Now, I'll go ahead and explain what the uh, how I'm gonna build up the frame. So to save me from making a two-sided part, I'm gonna cut this frame from the back side. So between here and here will be the thickest part of the frame. Between these two vectors here, you're gonna end up having a bit of a, uh, a pocket and with some material left at the front. So it ends up giving you this little lip on the front. In the center bit, I'm actually going to cut out and that'll be where you'll be able to see the acrylic through. Now, if we go ahead and turn back on the uh, layer one, you'll see that this vector here is dropped to the bottom. That's because I slightly offset it out a little bit because I really wanted to make sure that I had lots of wiggle room for this acrylic to fit into. But also I needed to make sure that my message was still in the center of my window at the front of the frame. So what I did was I centered this text inside the window and then I dropped down this, um, this outside vector that I'm gonna to use to cut my acrylic with. Now, whether or not it helped out or not, I'm really not sure, um, but in my mind, it seemed to make sense at the time. Let's just go ahead and turn back on all these other layers for a moment here. Now, like I had mentioned before, once I have my main design made, then I'm gonna to start to think about how I'm going to cut this. Now, our CNC doesn't have a particularly flat um, a bed to it, and we haven't taken the time to actually surface it for a couple of different reasons. So the way around that is to actually create a sacrificial spoil board with a pocket in it. And when you cut that pocket in there, it's gonna be true to your machine. So true to the end of the cutter. Um, and I needed that in order to be sure that when I did the V carving of all of my letters and the holly here, that there was the proper amount of material left on the face of the acrylic. So when I turned the lights on in the back, I would get the right amount of light. It's almost like a lithophane but just a really basic one, okay? So now I know I had to do this because I had cut several of these pieces of acrylic ahead of time and uh, they all failed because they ended up being um, a vari variation of thicknesses and so on. Some of them actually broke through the front of my acrylic, which wasn't great. So I really needed this, this sacrificial spoil board. So here's my plan. My plan is gonna go ahead to cut, use this actual sheet here to cut a piece of blank acrylic. And in my case, I actually cut this twice just in case I needed to back up. Then once I have that, I take it off my machine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this pocket, which is slightly oversized to the piece of acrylic into a piece of material MDF or uh, plywood or whatever I have kicking around the labs. And then what I'll do is I'll place that acrylic back in that pocket with double-sided tape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the uh, font with the actual uh, holly in it. And that's what I'm gonna use this sheet here for, okay? It's called the acrylic test sheet. Um, or text sheet, excuse me. And so you'll see that I have some blue vectors here and then I have a red vector. The red vector is the original copy of the vectors from my design or my layout sheet. I've flipped um, left to right because we're gonna be viewing this from the other side, so it had to be reversed. And then because of these three actually samples I made or three test cuts I made, I noticed that in some clay cases, the font got a bit too thin. And when it does that, when you do, do, do V carving, the V bit moves up and down and ends up leaving more material in here than what I wanted. I wanted this to actually come to a flat spot at the bottom of every letter here. So I did a little tiny offset from that. And what I did is I did that and I'd simulate the toolpath 
did it again, simulate the tool bath, until I got it to a point where I was happy with what I had. Now, there are some areas that still have a bit of material left in them, but it didn't affect my end result. So if I go ahead now up here to my layers and I hide my text for a second, these are the actual vectors I'm going to cut. And that looks pretty good. Some of them come a little tight, but it did work out in the end. It's not so bad. So we're going to go ahead and we'll turn back on that again. Let's have a quick look at the tooling for this particular sheet. Let's we'll just forward to our toolpaths tab. And we'll see we have one toolpath. It's a V-bit toolpath. Um, I made sure that I had a nice start depth and then I had a, fl a nice flat depth. Now this um, acrylic um, was 0.12 um, inches of an inch thick. So if you add these two numbers up together, I'm only gonna get 0 0.9. So that leaves me with 0 0.03 of material left behind and that seemed to be the right combination of material uh, left on so that the right amount of light would come through now i could have made it a bit thinner if i wanted to if i felt comfortable with that but this seemed to work out okay for me and and again i wanted to make sure i used the flat depth that way i could control where that flatness ended up being we're just going to close that down and let's just do a quick preview of that toolpath just so we can see what it looks like there it is right there. I chose my material color to be that sort of blue acrylic. You can see that bit moving along like we have in the new version 11.5. And that's what I ended up with. And you can see that at the bottom of all of these, if I go ahead and maximize that, in most cases, it gets right down to a flat bottom. There are a few spots that don't quite get there, but like up in here, but still that was, that was okay in the end. And that looks pretty good. And you also, if you want to, you can have a little fun with the lithophane option here. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like when it's actually lit. Uh, and that's sort of the, the idea there, if you wanted to give that a go. So let's go ahead and close that down and let's go back to our, our 2D view again. And we'll take a look at our next part. So now, like I'd mentioned, we're going to cut the acrylic blank first. And we're going to take it off the machine, put down our plywood, cut the pocket, then take this acrylic blank and put it back into the pocket again. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this V cover. You know, it's really important that the size of my job never changes or my start point. So it always ends up being in the right spot to cut this. Now, once I had that out and I could take a look at it, I was happy with the way it looked, held up to the light and had a quick peek at it. Then I could go ahead and start to design my frame. And this frame sheet over here has my frame on it. If we zoom in. So what I have is again, is this raised piece here. There'll be a pocket down to the front, leaving me with a little bit of a lip so I can put my acrylic in there. It'll stay in place. Then I'll cut my window. And this little piece here is actually for the wires, for the LEDs that I'm going to double-sided tape to the inside of this. I needed a way to get the, the wires outside of my frame. So again, let's have a look at the tool paths for this. So this is really easy stuff, a couple pockets and then a cutout pass. So if we go ahead and preview all the tool paths for this, um, we can go ahead and see what we're gonna end up with. So here we do have it doing the, the center pocket down to the lip. And then we'll go ahead and we're gonna do a quick, um, th that shape that you saw for a, an exit for my wires. We'll cut that into place next. There's there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do our cutout pass. For both the inside so this will be the part for the frame that'll pop out make sure i use tabs so it hold in place nice and tight and i also um, the way the orientation of the grain is i made sure that it matched so i could get a good sense of my tabs obviously these tabs are going to be weaker because the grain is going across them where this one here these are getting much more secure and also i didn't put a tab on the bottom for a very important reason because i wanted to keep the bottom of this frame true to my machine so i knew it was going to be flat and i wouldn't have to sand anything away to make it look a little bit funny and that worked out okay now i want to make a quick point here is i didn't actually have my leds at the time that i designed this so i wasn't sure whether this was actually going to work or not i just knew it needed to be there so what I suggest that you do in your case is once you get your LEDs and you have an idea of what the how they're going to plug in, then you can go ahead and adjust this shape to be what you need for the to get things out of the back of your frame. So you can get it plugged in. The ones that I have just plug into a little um, USB battery pack and a recharger for your cell phone, and it worked quite nicely. And I'm going to add in a bonus sheet here for you. So this is the optional back. One of the things that I wish I had taken the time to do was to create maybe an oak back for it, because that's what I used to make the frame with. 
So you've got two vectors here. This will be the outside vector if you want to actually create a back that fits on the back of your project, actually glue it on and maybe sand down the edges. Or if you want to use this vector here and you can actually create a little insert that actually fits into the back. Just make sure that you, you test cut it and make sure it's going to work for you in the end. Anyway, that's all you need for this project. Once I had it all worked out and I got few, uh, through a few of the little bumps, it was quite easy and straightforward to cut. So let's head over to some labs footage where you're going to see me in the labs cutting this project. <laughs> Well, I really enjoyed making that. And as you can see, it did take a little bit of planning, but with the right amount of planning, it works out pretty well. Um, this is a really highly customizable project. You can use it for all kinds of things. If you have a YouTuber in your family, you can make an on the air sign. If somebody's getting married, you can make a nice little wedding gift. It's a fantastic little project. And right now it's free in your VNCO account. So go ahead, go over there and download it and create your own. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. If you do make this and you post it somewhere socially, make sure you tag us in it. And we'd also love to see it in our user forum. Until next time, hope you have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.